Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about vitamin D deficiency leading to dementia. Last week we talked about some of the screening processes you can utilize, such as smell, to detect early onset of Alzheimer's, dementia, and even Parkinson's disease. You can utilize smells like coffee, anise, peppermint, and peanut butter in order to determine early onset. I'll go ahead and link that video below. Today we're going to talk about some studies that show there is some correlation between vitamin D deficiency and, and dementia. So let's get right into it. Dementia is one of the leading causes of disability and dependency among the older population worldwide. Globally, there's over 55 million cases of dementia and there are probably millions of cases being diagnosed every year. The prevalence of neurocognitive dysfunction or decline has been accelerating over the years. Now, 2019, they did a meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is studying different studies on vitamin D and cognitive dysfunction. And what they found is there's a significant association between vitamin D deficiency and dementia. There's a strong association when you have vitamin D levels below 10 nanograms per milliliter. There's moderate association between 10 and 20 nanograms per milliliter. Now, I've done different videos on testing for vitamin D. You wanna watch that one because it goes into different testing methods, right? You can do 25 hydroxy vitamin D, 125 dihydroxy vitamin D. So you wanna be able to look at it and measure these levels for yourself. 2022, in Australia, they did a, uh, a pretty large study. They showed that decreased vitamin D is associated with lower brain volume and the risk of dementia and stroke. When they talk about lower brain volume, there's a uh, software that is available and some of the MRI facilities will have the software. It's called NeuroQuant and what that software does is it looks at the volume of the brain. So they can tell you if there is uh, volume changes of different lobes of the brain as well as, as well as the cerebellum. So it can actually give you an idea of how the brain is doing uh, structurally. Now there's also genetic analysis that supported causal effect of vitamin D deficiency and dementia. And in some population, up to 17% of dementia cases might have been prevented if their vitamin D was greater than 50 nanomoles per liter. Now that converts to 20.03 nanograms per milliliter. Now in certain countries they'll use uh, nanomoles and in the United States they use nanograms. So what I'll do is I'll link a calculator below so you can calculate what your vitamin D level is and you can compare it to the different studies available. So 20.03 nanograms, that in my opinion is very low, um, but it can prevent uh, the onset of uh, Alzheimer's or dementia in a lot of patients. We like this number to be greater than 60. 60 to 80 is ideal, up to 100 usually is safe. So my recommendations for taking vitamin D is vitamin D3, 500 international, 5,000, I'm sorry, international units per day. Take it after a meal. Vitamin K2, 100 micrograms per day. Uh, also after a meal, because it's a fat-soluble vitamin. Magnesium will enhance this, the conversion of inactive vitamin D to active vitamin D. So you want to use magnesium, 200 to 400 milligrams per day. Now there are different forms of magnesium that you can utilize. There's magnesium citrate, helps more with bowel movements, glycinates, great for overall body function, and then there's also magnesium L-theanate, which is great for brain. So if we're looking for brain function, we want to use magnesium L-theanate. You can also use other fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin A and E. And if you have a gallbladder problem where you can't digest fat very well, right? A lot of women who have Hashimoto's thyroiditis uh, they also have a sluggish gallbladder. So you want to be able to support the gallbladder so you can digest the fats. 
So I would suggest if you have gallbladder or sluggish gallbladder issues, or if you had your gallbladder removed, you can use gallbladder support, ox bile, uh, 100 to 200 milligrams after meals. So this is a simple strategy to prevent uh, early onset of Alzheimer's dementia, and it's becoming a problem worldwide, so you definitely want to take a preventative measure. When, once Alzheimer's and dementia gets really advanced, it's very hard to reverse. So you want to catch this really early on, right? Like the first onset, like you forget your keys a lot, you uh, start to uh, forget names, you forget to, you know, how to get to somewhere uh, and you have to kind of think about it. You want to be able to catch this really early on and make the necessary changes. So I've also done a whole series on neuroinflammation, so you might want, might want to watch that one because it gives you some basics about decreasing inflammation and improving overall brain function. All right, my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on The Healthy Side. Have an awesome day.